Nami vs. Miss Doublefinger is another Alabasta fight. Will it be like Sanji's fight or like Zoro's? Let's find out. The fight starts in Chapter 190. The flashback reveals that Usopp built a new weapon for her, but we don't know what it can do. Miss Doublefinger sneak attacks Nami and pierces her shoulder. Her fruit is revealed to be the Toke Toke no Mi. Nami starts to use her weapon, the climb attack. Before even actually using it, she says that it can summon clouds, make rain, stir up wind, and change the weather. This is the setup for what the weapon is capable of. She has two gags to end off the chapter. The fight continues in 191. Doublefinger attacks as Nami runs away. Nami has another gag attack that results in her face getting scratched. Nami continues running while reading the manual a little. She uses her cloak to avoid Doublefinger's spin dash. Nami hides and reads the combat instructions so she can actually fight back. The narrator gives us rules for the weapon. Blowing into the staff will release bubbles. There's a heat ball, cool ball, and thunder ball. Nami tries all of those out. Doublefinger allowing her to do this is kinda convenient, but it fits her laid back personality. The balls do nothing, so Nami runs again until her leg is stabbed. Before she can get stomped out, Nami attacks with Cyclone Temple, which blows Doublefinger back. This move is explained through the hot and cold bubbles that were just set up. There's one bubble on each end. When Nami threw part of the staff, the bubbles spun, but when Doublefinger stopped it, the hot and cold air collided, which resulted in explosive winds. I don't know if this is scientifically accurate, but I'll give Oda the benefit of the doubt, cause this was cool and creative. And then Usopp foreshadows the tornado tempo through his instructions. He describes it as a finishing move that can only be used once. While Nami's reading, she gets fatally stabbed, but this is a mirage. Nami explains that she used the cool ball to change the atmosphere's density to refract light. I'm loving the science in this fight. In 192, Doublefinger pins Nami on the wall and then attacks, allowing her to dodge. I can't defend this, why didn't she just hit her the first time? Double takes the thunder staff, but Nami takes it back. Nami is now planning something and needs moisture. She shoots out water with some gags before Doublefinger decides to stop messing around. Nami shoots out cool balls before dodging the attack. Then she shoots out heat balls while Double powers up. The science here is that when moist hot air rises and cold air descends, the moisture in the air condenses. This creates a cloud. This is why she used water, cool balls, and heat balls. Doublefinger misses an attack, but Rubble hits Nami's leg, injuring it. Nami uses more cool balls and heat balls to make the cloud bigger and takes an attack from her opponent. Finally, she sends a thunderbolt to it, which creates a thundercloud, allowing her to strike with thunderbolt tempo, a lightning strike. Doublefinger is temporarily stunned, showing the amount of damage she took, but she recovers and strikes Nami, but this is Mirage again. In 194, Doublefinger attacks as Nami prepares tornado tempo. Nami sacrifices her injured foot to keep her opponent at a distance, then she activates her trump card. Two birds tangle around Doublefinger, twist her, and blow her away, ending the fight. This fight is short, but easily one of the better written fights in the story. Nami's climb attack is basically its own magic system with strict rules and limitations. Nami only has three types of balls, water creation, and the tornado tempo. None of these balls are able to do damage alone, so she has to set up all of her attacks and use her knowledge of science to fight. With these three balls, she's able to create cyclones, mirages, and thunderclouds. This is easily one of the coolest things from One Piece. I also love how it's connected to her status as a navigator. Everything on Nami's side is properly set up before it's used in this fight, unlike a certain swordsman's battle from the same arc. It's unfortunate what happens to the staff in timeskip. This intricate strategy and science is thrown out of the window for easier to activate more powerful abilities. It's not rewarding, and it's a microcosm of what happened to One Piece fights as time went on. My only criticism for this fight is that Doublefinger misses way too many attacks. Nami barely has any combat experience, so for her to be weaving so many of her attacks is unbelievable. Again, you could argue that Doublefinger was chilling, but it's a little too convenient. In conclusion, this fight is great because all of Nami's powers are set up properly. Nami's powers require preparation and creativity, and all of this results in a rewarding fight. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.